Speaking of killing things with guns, have you seen this trailer for, for Pal World? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I don't think it's <laughs> ironic. No, I don't think so. It's like Pokemon, but you also get to... <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's an extremely dark text. This whole thing, it, mm-hmm. it, it, what it what it immediately brings to mind is school shootings. There's there's some real money shots in here. This is one of them where you like. <laughs> this thing just looks great. It's super cool. I'm I'm very into it. Yeah, I was actually thinking. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So first of all, you and I were talking. Yes. And we said, well, we're probably going to have to move to Unity at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Unity is not what we're working on right now. And I think <laughs> the proposal is that you're going on a trip for a couple days or a couple streams worth of a trip uh, starting <laughs> next Monday, right? So today uh-huh. and Sunday are our last opportunities to work on Manchester, at least on the stream. Right. Theoretically, we might get tired of you. Well, whatever. I was gonna say, like, is it is it not Manchester if we do it in Unity? It's true. Uh, the web version of Manchester. I, Unity web is real too. We yes. can we can ship it. Um. So, what I was thinking is that maybe what we can do uh, mm-hmm. is, are there anything? Is there like we can continue working on the map editor as we are right now? But is there anything that you feel like we want to work on for the last these last two streams on the website mm. that is a great question because the editor says- may be something that we might end not end up using specifically but i know you were like part of the way through a jump point search implementation that i think we could probably bring over to a different contexts right context right oh yeah it's um that it it doesn't quite work right. Uh, I think it's just my base case though. We could we could pull that up. It's it's half done. Yeah, or we that, seem, that else. seems reasonable. Yeah. Hmm. Say, what else do we have in the? I mean, we have so many things in the hopper for this thing. There's a lot. Um, I agree. Yeah. What other what other concepts have we sort of put on the back burner for a minute? Um. I guess other like we don't have any moving uh and we don't have any moving uh bad guys uh nor do That's we true. have any game progression. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Game progression I feel like we'll probably get tossed out for Unity or we'll have to do it again. They might have their Maybe own notion of like scene transitions and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's an inbuilt concept for sure. Okay. The movie bad guys. Yeah, right. The editor. Oops, it's not multiplayer anymore. It's funny. Uh, switching between these tabs is like you can refresh into either or, and one server will pick it up, which is actually really great. Like this is this is frozen now. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, because the 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 sort of reset is the entire dev server. I, th- I think right. It's it's the entire dev server, but I only have I've only got one. And whatever I connect to is is what I get. I got it. Yeah, yeah it's weird. It's cool, but it's weird. Yeah. Um gosh, okay, yeah. Yeah, with that in mind. I mean let's let's put the jump point search thing. It's a mess. Um and I got distracted by the other side project, so same. <laughs> yeah. N B D. Um, sure. Oop. All right, let's see. I guess I added my own. Oh, I think I just added this. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. So, so descriptive. Wait, tell me about Final Fantasy VII, first of all. Oh, my God. Okay. I mean, uh, I just wanted to upgrade it. Uh, all right. So, so you the have upgrade to, just came out today. Is that what happened? 
the, the the ps5 upgrade came out today yeah and you have to pay for or it, like right? maybe yesterday it's free i mean you already did you buy the game i only have it through ps plus so i think ah, I might then, have to buy then the you do have to pay for it yeah i think you have to buy like the whole game again which is bullshit oh um, good for me good for you but uh i bought it i bought it when it came out so i have a digital copy okay and so what you have to do is you have to download the ps4 version and from that, download your cloud saves. And then in the game, hit a button that says upload, upload save to like a different cloud. It's updating to uploading to the Square Enix cloud. Okay. And then you download the PS5 version, which has the same icon on the PS5 dashboard. And you and you have to make sure that you like start the right one which you can only tell by going into like a sub menu it says like game version you're running <sighs> and thankfully thankfully when you download the new one it does choose the newer one like it's at least smart enough to have picked up that like yes i wanted to run Gosh. the ps5 version of this game so so you open up the ps5 version which starts a lot faster um because it's faster on a ps5 uh oh and weird. then yeah okay. yeah the ps5 version starts faster than the ps4 version on the same hardware which is really funny yeah um and then you hit download save, which is different than load game and different than the Sony cloud, but you hit download inside the PS5 version and it downloads it like you only have one slot in the cloud. So it downloads the one you uploaded and then it immediately like gives you an gives you like 50 pop-ups for whatever trophies you got on the PS4 version for like the new game you just downloaded. Right. Which has the same icon on the dashboard because it's the same fucking game with all the same information on it, but like for some reason they have to do everything twice i feel like i uh i'd heard about like like save transfers being really really terrible uh and it seems really like terrible. what what square enix did to get around that was to say you know what don't use sony stuff use our cloud that yep. kind of sounds like what happened yeah it sure seems that way and also like you can't you can't download this game what this is game this? that says Final Fan This is Final Fantasy Seven Remake Integrate for PS5. Okay. This this is not the game you download. Uh, the game you download is Final Fantasy VII Remake Upgrade for PS4 version owners. <laughs> Which is not available for purchase unless you're logged in to a console that owns the old one. So there's like a dependency chain. I bet their customer support people are having a good time right now. It's so stupid. Yeah. And like, it's also not this game, but you do, you, you can download this game and then this game, <laughs> but not this game. I think they hired the right Microsoft to design their website. Uh, the Microsoft version is better. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what it was, I think. So it's, how do you, how do it's you like, so silly. did you beat this? I did. I loved it. I thought it was great. Okay. So I should play it. Well, you don't like JRPGs. That's true. So I don't know. I mean, I played Final yeah. Fantasy VII way back in the day. The original? Yes. Did you Did you ever play Kingdom Hearts? No. Okay. This one's more like Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Which is, which is like, good, bad. I, I, honestly, the entire notion of Kingdom Hearts is perplexing to me. It's... Yes. I guess it's kind of a Japanese person's dream, because... I, I think this is maybe obvious, but, like... Disney is huge in Japan. Like, mm -hmm. people love Disney in Japan. That checks out. Yeah. Um, so I guess they just decided like let's 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 combine these flavors together. It's you know. Did you did you ever play Mario RPG? Uh, no, I I was really wanted to, but that was one of the, that was like a seventy dollar Super Nintendo game, so I could never buy it. This game is great. Okay. Um, I I love it so much. Are you into like the the derivations, like Paper Mario and that stuff? None of them are as good as this. Okay. Um, because this is free this on was, Nintendo Switch Online, right? It, it. I don't think it is. Is it not Nintendo Switch Online Mario? I don't. I don't think it's there. I'd be so. <laughs> well, i love their sarcastic reporting 
I, I guess I guess there's one that people are waiting on, and it's these two. <laughs> Jason Schreier, every time like they add a new game to to switch online SNES, he's always like mm-hmm. he has like the one word tweet finally when he like quote tweets the announcement. It's always some bullshit like random <laughs> back of the catalog <laughs> game. It's so funny. Ah, here you go. Uh I don't understand I don't understand what this thing is. But you're thinking you're thinking of this thing. Oh yes, my brother has one of those. I think. Yeah, my my friend Scott has one too. But like this thing, which is just an emulator with fifty games on it, doesn't work on. You the know Switch. what it must be is that those games are good enough that they're gonna try to remake them for for Switch. There's probably a, a, a Mario RPG remake on its way. Mm-hmm. So I I heard I heard that there could be a. Uh, yeah, like a bunch of 2D Square RPGs coming out, uh, like Final Fantasy III, and this is of the same uh, the same time period. Yeah, because they but may that they have were, actually but that they were going to do it in this Final style. Fantasy IV a lot. Like it's gotten remade like eight times. Oh man, well, I, I, heard, I, I heard that. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I heard they were going to think about doing a remake in this style, which is like kind of very Fox easy, yeah. cut and paste. Yeah, like yeah, do you want to make your 2D game look cool? Do it this way. Is that a good aesthetic? Have, did you play Octopath? I I think I played the demo because I thought it looked cool. I think it's a dope aesthetic. Yeah, it looks really cool. I love the idea of playing a game like this. I heard this game sucked though. Mm-hmm. I heard that like, <laughs> like you can play like eight different characters Octopath, but it, 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 it doesn't really game, matter. Yeah. It, it seemed kind of bolted together. I think was the criticism. That's too bad because like, this shit looks dope. Yeah, that guy's really big. That, that's a really big it's, it's dude. huge you, you never know yeah so yeah like uh they could they could totally take this yeah and turn it into this that'd be that'd be fine mario rpg always looked really good right it looked perfect like you don't need to improve on those graphics right it's it's amazing because like first of all <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> Uh, but like, yeah, these these are the graphics, and like, boy howdy, <laughs> it's great. They, uh, it's, it's, they have it's wonderful. the kind of like, um, look at they have like fo- fake lighting. Look at Bowser's back; mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like fake polygonal lighting, which is cool. Yeah, uh, and then there's also like, SNES has a lot of has like been doing the upscale thing for a while. So, right, so the pixels are actually themselves. Oh, 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 oh never mind. You're talking yeah, like about you, like yeah, like people it, people it's like super sampling or something. This is the same game just run through a filter, but like but like it looks not terrible. Mm. This this is so much better than the original, or like so many fewer pixels. But also it's got that muddy thing that I can see now. I would have preferred if they just did the they take every pixel and the blow sh- it up. Yeah, sharper pixels. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Well, it's I mean, more like I, I, like the the like the uh, the SNES games look really good. Like. Uh, I played through Super Metroid really last good. year, and it was friggin' amazing. Ah, oh, that one was fucking. That great. game is that game. You can release it right now and be one of the best games ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, I I stand the heck out of this game. This one, this one was really fun. Uh, the writing is supposed th- to be good. In, in my RPG, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Well, so all all have to say, this is a Square game. Um, which for some reason they didn't put on the box, but like, I to me to me it is the proto Kingdom Hearts where Square was like, what if we put some Final Fantasy bullshit with another franchise, and they came up with this, and then they're like, okay, but what if we did it with Disney instead? You know the other the other game that I think of that was also supposed to be really good was uh, Mario versus Rabbits or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a Switch game. Rabbits, uh-huh. yeah. And it's like essentially like Advance Wars or that style of like kind of tactical turn based. I think it's I think it's like XCOM, right? XCOM. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what like what the hell are these things? Horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in love Who with Who says I'm, like <laughs> I'm not in love with the Mario lore enough to want to like rush and play Mario games, which is probably why mm-hmm. I never played RPG or, or this game, even though they're both supposed to be really good. Yeah, I mean, it is not a great 
it is not a great lore. You're not missing much. But like, what Homer Simpson bullshit is this? <laughs> Good God. Well, they're supposed to look bad because they're the enemies, right? No, the, I think these are your friends. It does say versus though, so maybe not. No, I think you kill the rabbits. I think you kill them with guns. Mm. Okay. Right, Mario has a gun and he shoots things. Yep, that's true. Speaking of killing things with guns, have you seen this trailer for, for Pal World? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, that, that oh, went man. by. Uh, yeah, that got, that's, that got sent to me by a friend. I was like... I, I, I think it's... I don't think it's <laughs> ironic. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's like Pokemon, but you also get to... <laughs> Jesus, I... <laughs> I actually like it, to me. It's an extremely dark text. This whole thing, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it what it what it immediately brings to mind is school shootings. You wow, know, really? It, yeah, that is, that is a dark, but uh, but it's like, a dark are, reading. Uh, but I, but I, I, it's not my fault. It's their fault. I'm gonna say. I was gonna say there's ostensibly like it's a game where you're playing like what looks like a teenager running around with an assault rifle shooting animals. So <laughs> I see why you got that. Yeah, and then you pet these like pokemon foxes you know and, and also like breed them Ugh. yeah but animal husbandry I, I and then like... you just like fucking kill dudes with an assault like it's brutal and like they like the, that... the gun has really well simulated <laughs> recoil and everything uh -huh. no i feel like i feel like that there's there's some real money shots in here this is one of them where you like <laughs> use your like, is that supposed to be? Human. I mean, it's supposed to be funny, right? It's supposed to be slapstick funny. Also, also like the game doesn't do that. <laughs> That's too much. Yeah. Do you think you can really shoot a rocket at every building and just like blow it up? I don't think so. Wait, is this is it? Is this a parody trailer? What is this? I think this is the actual game, right? No, this is real. Yeah. Okay. I, all, all I'm saying is, I don't think it'll do that. You don't think it has fully destructible buildings? Like no. That. So. This is the other one that got me, which is quite possibly the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, like these ooh. enslaved Pokemon babies making M16s. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, this entire thing is like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, you know, they. I've always... I feel like they've, they've never fully answered the question in Pokemon because they eat... They eat animals. Also, they just, like, killed a bunch of them right there. <laughs> like... And then How there's many, like they're, random they're just mermaid woman on a surfboard. <laughs> oh, God. oh yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh, like they eat like pigs and chickens and whatever in the Pokemon world. Like yep. they're not all vegetarians, so either it implies the existence of normal animals, which you never see. I think or... we talked about this, and I think we concluded that they do eat Pokemon, right? They they have to eat the Pokemon. Yeah. I mean this this person's eaten <laughs> whatever the fuck that. <laughs> uh yeah it, also it's really funny that YouTube yeah yeah was just like someone oh, made the joke that this is just pokemon gun <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is very very funny but does this not so, yeah. feel like ultimately the most cynical game ever made this game like it's pretty high up there yeah also, so it's supposed to be a survival game. So is this like Minecraft or Rust? One of those. Yeah. Poach, poaching and crime. Yeah. The Wait, two it's genders. In, it's, in, <laughs> it's encouraging you to poach, though. It's like if you sneak in, you get money. It's only illegal if you get caught. So this game is uh, pro poaching. Uh, yeah. And uh, pro slave labor. Oh, yes. So this game is right. like Capitalism Simulator uh -huh. for, for kids. It's it's uh yeah it's the acquisition simulator you've always wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Holy <Gosh>. shit. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So going back on topic ish. Did you play Final Fantasy VII, the new one, the PS5 one? No, no, I just downloaded it. Just, um, okay, because I wanted to know like how much different it was because I have the PS4 version through PS Plus. I just don't have the <laughs> PS5 version. Uh, I, I mean. I expect it's the normal, the normal, like you get 60 FPS or super sweet graphics trade-off, which is a pretty nice trade-off. Like, I don't mind it. Yeah. Also, also the load time is incredibly fast. I think 
Sony did a very interesting thing where their where backwards compatibility is I think they actually limit transfer speeds to match a, a spinning disc. Oh, I see. Like I think I think they're like if the game gets data too fast, it might break. So you don't get it that fast. So I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I, I I do know that like there's a new compression format for assets in, mm -hmm. in PS5, and and that's why like Subnautica PS5 is like. 30% the size of, of Subnautica PS4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With like higher res graphics. Yeah, like that part is cool. Yeah. I think, but I think if it's not, yeah, I think if you're not using the new stack, you get like a slower disc too, which is really interesting. Yeah. Did I tell you I tried playing Subnautica? Oh no, did you just hate every second of it? Terrifying, right? Uh, you know, honestly, I didn't get past the like the, the the beginning of the game because I like had to get specific materials, mm -hmm. and I needed like five of one thing, and I swam around these like coral caverns around my little pod for like twenty mm -hmm. minutes, and I found like one of the things that I needed, <laughs> and I'm like, what exactly is this game? It's like it's like collecting coins in in in, in Mario Brothers, but like less fun than that. <laughs> um, I love it. That's Hell one yeah. of my pet peeves uh, in any, any game design. Is like we're gonna give you little spinning tchotchkes to move your player character over to collect, and that is like what constitutes the mechanic of the game. Like, Obviously, there's much the more game, in Subnautica. Right? Yeah. I'm sure it's very, very deep and complicated. But like, I couldn't get past the first twenty minutes of it because I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, yeah, I mean. I've I've tried I've thought that I might enjoy other like survival y crafty games like that and I don't and it's usually for exactly that reason. Okay. Um yeah. where like sort of you hit a thing where you're like, it's not clear to me what I should be doing next and the thing you're telling me to get isn't here, so thanks. Yeah. And that's a bummer. Yeah. Um this dog sneezes real good. He's he's a good dog. Oh yeah. Strain of the eye holes too. It's dark. Um, this dog we will not put to slave labor making assault rifles for us. No, but he does shoot artillery. <laughs> I guess, I guess that's true, but you know, lovingly? We're... <laughs> He's a loyal tank. The yeah. loyalest tank you'll ever meet. <laughs> Although I don't know if, she, like, Shivas are supposed to be very high maintenance dogs. Are they? I mean, this dog has been pretty high maintenance, all things considered. Uh, I, I concur. Yeah. Can't I can't wait to drop, dude? When we go into Unity, we're gonna get to use a real shader. I mean, we've got real shaders. They're just we've we've got real shaders, but like we can use a geometry shader. It's true. It's gonna. We just spent so much time on hacking around the real piece of hardware. I'm excited for engine features. Sure. It'll it'll present its own awful bullshit, but. I'm excited for it. Yeah. I expect the same amount of bullshit, just different. Well, I mean, like, think about how hard multiplayer is going to be once we get to Unity. Because, oh, yeah, that's good. Terrible, yeah. Because, like, how do you get the, the next build over to the other person, right? Ooh, live dev multiplayer. Yep, that seems fairly impossible. Uh, I, I wonder, though, if we could use Dropbox. You know, we could both sync to the same Dropbox folder and the build directory is, like, synchronized. I wonder if that would, wouldn't be too horrible. Interesting. Yeah. That's that's like a pretty good guess. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or or maybe there's something where you can actually like yeah send modules across the wire in in a, some sort of known format, but yeah. I doubt it. I read a cool. Uh, I read something that was quite motivating actually which is it was like a company that like sells uh multiplayer implementations like off the shelf multiplayer implementations oh that's cool i guess it's like an engine or something like that and uh their rollback networking one was the most expensive and i was like oh we know how to do that <laughs> we know how to do that hell yeah time to sell our own yeah uh that makes total sense that it's the most expensive because god it's a pain <laughs> it's a pain Whoever whoever wrote the version of that, that they're selling definitely deserves to get compensated more for it. Yeah. That's so funny. Hmm. Ooh, ooh, all right. Um, fuck, pal world. Goddamn, dude. <laughs> thanks for thanks for reminding me of that. 
Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gosh. The. Um, okay. Should we? Should we? JPS. Well, let's, let's see. Talk to me about let's, it. Let's. Let's see. Yeah. How? What awful state I've left this in. Um. There's my debugger. So. All right. So the thing. The thing I actually struggled the most with was the base case, and I was in the process of re-implementing this when we got struck. Can we actually else. remind ourselves how jump point search works? Because I. Oh, we absolutely can. Kind of vaguely forgot. There's that one sure. blog that had some good graphics. Um, I got you. Yes, this person's a hero. Look at these mm -hmm. amazing colored graphics. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the important part is to think of it as. Um, I guess I wasn't quite thinking of it as a star. But thinking of it as a star is, is important for actually the starting position specifically. Yeah. Um, so it, what I initially did was added multiple nodes to the open set for multiple directions, which was just the wrong approach. Um, it is just one, one search from the open node. Uh, and in fact, get neighbors, uh, I think needed a, uh, like a non previous case. Bas basically that's, this is that only ever gets called the first time you ever, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, or, or like kind of, if you. If you keep doing this, it becomes a star vanilla, right? Like you're kind of, or it becomes some breadth first Dijkstra bullshit that we don't want to use. Um, but but this base case was missing earlier as well, which just returns everything. Yeah. Um, obviously not no motion and doing some culling on this one for stepping outside the grid. Right. Um, but this this was actually a key step in getting past where I was. Totally. Um, yeah. So from there, uh, I added that, and then I was just in the process of debugging sort of what the jump points from that were. Um, and I wanted to be able to step through and see each each of these searches effectively. So like, it should do all the diagonals and all the horizontals and look for the goal. Yeah. Um, this case obviously works. It immediately finds the diagonal path from 0, 0, 2, 2, 2. Uh, this one with an obstacle in the middle is not working. Interesting. Okay. And then the next one also doesn't work? Also doesn't work, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, I think I think I am uh, I think there's a case where something was adding the same point and it was getting stuck in a loop. Um, it was like stepping backwards in the wrong way, so I think that's a important one to check on for finding the jump. Got it. So hmm. um yeah, looking at looking at this grid, I expect it to put like I expect this and this and this and this to be jumps, right? Um, because it searches this or to be forced neighbor. Sorry, like it searches sees that this has a forced neighbor and then adds it, and then has to do a new search from here. I'll pull up the I'll pull up the forced neighbors diagram yeah. to uh. Um, can we check out, uh, mm -hmm. the starting point? Like you mentioned that, like add immediate neighbors or something like that. Uh, I, I think what's challenging about this algorithm, uh, or at least when I was trying to study it was knowing the difference between knowing the difference between the part that actually adds something to the open set and the part that's trying to determine whether something should be added to the open set. Cause they're both like these iterative processes. <laughs> uh, and it's a little bit tricky to determine that. Um, so maybe, maybe let's just start at the very beginning. Like how does this, how does this code, like what does the JPS function actually do? Uh, can we go to the, stop, the, the, the top of that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I'll actually go through the, the structure using as well, um, which is this search point where it kind of it ended up getting bubbled through to everything because knowing knowing the previous and knowing whether or not it was a forced neighbor sort of showed up in a lot of cases. Okay. Um, and it was it was not helpful to not have that information. Also, the direction that you're entering from is really important for yes. too many things. Um, 
So everything gets passed around by this. There's no more five argument functions. Um, I figured we would actually figure out the optimization later. Okay. That um, totally also, makes sense. Also, I'm sorting by uh, Chebyshev distance. Um, and honestly, I, I, just because maybe it was a slightly faster algorithm and uh, seemed like the actual thing we wanted to measure for, uh, yeah. What is Chebyshev? Uh, chessboard distance. Okay. It's it's just like like Manhattan distance. Uh, it's Manhattan distance. I think it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do actually, I think, although this uh, is a little bit different, right? Yeah. X one and Y one is a. You're, oh, this is actually more complicated than Manhattan distance. Um, it's... I think it's supposed to take into account diagonals, which is the correct thing for this algorithm. This is just saying, like, we'll take the maximum of the distance along the x or y axis. Mm -hmm. And so what is this being used for again? Uh, for, sorting, for sorting the priority queue. We'll see. We'll see if this is actually correct. But we do need to sort the priority queue by something. I thought, I thought that this, the priority queue is sorted by how the, the the cumulative path. It's like the maximum distance to the point up, to, like to a point up to that. Like it, it includes mm. the it includes the distance that you traveled to get to mm -hmm. that point. Includes the distance that you traveled. Oh, interesting. Because okay. if you don't include that, then gotcha. I was doing I was doing distance from destination. Yeah. Well, yeah. The I, reason I think why I, this works. The reason why like uh, Dijkstra works mm -hmm. optimally is because you're trying the best paths first, and so right. In order for you to know what the best path is, the distance has to include the history as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, but uh, uh, doing it this way against the destination distance, it's choosing the. It's choosing a search from the point closest to the the start. Yes. No, closest to the destination. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So if you if you step the map, that point becomes immediately high priority because it's very close to where you're trying to get to. I'm not sure if that is the correct sort or not, but I was just playing with it. Um I think that like that's half of the solution because like the difference between Dijkstra and A star is that it does account for distance to the uh, to the destination, but you you but what, what you do is you add that to the path distance. So you say right. like I'm gonna add the I'm gonna have the path distance, but if I don't try to bias it to in the direction of the destination, mm. it's gonna mm -hmm. the search algorithm is gonna search behind me and, yep. and search backwards as well. And I want to yep. try to discourage it from doing that. That makes sense. Yeah. OK, so I think, yeah, I think distance calculations then are missing uh, the pre the distance traveled on top of that. But that's yeah. OK. Cool. OK. But that only comes into effect when we add the next nodes. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So we start with uh, our start node becomes a jump point um, because it is part of the path, and you have to have it there. Think. And then it also gets put into our open list of nodes to search, and that's the starting point. Uh, and then it is a loop through that until you run out of open nodes, or I thought I had something where you. No, we search. I mean, I think we search the whole map just like this, just like this algorithm. Yeah. Can you remind me? Um... Are, are jump points. Uh... The jump point in that in that it seems like it's outside the loop over the open nodes. And that goes against what I remember this what I used to think this how, how this algorithm worked. Mm -hmm. Why are jump that almost implies that jump points are being shared between nodes and Oh, open um nodes. jump I think really the jump points here are a stable set of point IDs, which is just coordinate position to the actual node we're looking at, because you do need to be able to look backwards. I think I think I think this is really just the map of what we've seen at our jump points. And only only if they match the criteria of 
being one of these, right? Like, by the end of this, there should be six jump points in the set, such that when we're here and we look at the previous node, we can actually, it's, this is just, this is just cash. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, we could catch some other way, or like make previous actually a pointer. What actually is a jump point? Why does this window keep popping up? Um, the jump points are specifically the nodes from where we have a force neighbor. Yeah. So those. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, so, yeah. Really, really jump points. I mean, really, this is actually like path nodes. Um, is probably, is probably a lot more accurate. Okay. Cause it's just, maybe it's we just can the walk, totality. Maybe we can out. walk through, uh, we can walk through the, the algorithm and I, and I can, it'll, it'll, it'll become clearer to me what, what that totally is for. Totally. Um, so yeah, this, this did match my expectation for for this, by the way, which is if we're starting in the top right, this this should be our set for destination and start. Like since since this is the center, we expect each one of these to be a force neighbor, and that's what it gave us here, which is great. If you imagine this is a three by three. Yeah, yeah, totally. So intuitively, that's what that's what we should see out of this. Uh, what we were getting was not that. Yeah. So I think a couple of things are just slightly off, and then my distance sorting is probably a little a little wacky at the moment. Right. Um, so I think one thing I, I I think you actually pointed out something in the very beginning that was really good. Um, mm. If you go into get neighbors, mm -hmm. and you have that case, uh, what if we dug that out and just called it before we loop over the like really what what this is for is populating the initial open list it's it's not though um it's it's not the open list because what we should do is from from this start node we get the valid neighbors and we go we go in every direction on them we should recursively we should we should try to follow each one of them in the direction they're going and like this goes up here this one kicks off in each direction so there's like a it's it's recursive i wasn't going to put each step into the open set though because it's not i don't know it's not maybe maybe i'm wrong it's at least not how i was treating the open set here cuz once you get one of these nodes you're you're supposed to recursively go as far as you can until you hit this point and this point and finish searching the rest of the grid. Does that make, does that I, make sense? I, I think in this case though, like my, my expectation, uh, like if you go back to that blog post, mm -hmm. um, my expectation is that the seven points around the green square mm -hmm. would get added to the open list. And then the ones that would be prioritized because of the distance, uh, because of the A star distance heuristic would be the left node and the the left neighbor and the bottom neighbor, uh, which is the, which are the gray ones next to the green square, right? And so hmm. then you would pop mm -hmm. each one of those off the list. You'd pick one arbitrarily because they're both equally the same, and then you would basically try to find the jump point after that, it, or it, it, any jump points after that, right? <laughs> and if you do find any jump points, you would add those to the open list. And I believe you're correct that the jump points that you would find are the like the 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 gray node to the the right of the black node, and the gray node to the to the bottom of the black node. <laughs> uh, and so those two would get added to the open list, right? <laughs> uh, and since those are closest to Those are very close Wait, to the destination. Okay. I think the A star heuristic will cause those to get chosen next. Interesting. Okay. I guess my my impression is that 
at least for, at least for this algorithm you don't touch these nodes yet you do all the diagonals first and you actually walk every every node of the graph oh i see like did you pause it how did, how did you do that I, on this i did there's a stop button oh i see so like we all all of this has been explored before we even got to the horizontal ones i see yeah Oh, okay. So there. So basically, what you're saying is like they, tr it's it tried to do the jump points search. It's it's. I think it's a recursive search of the neighbors, from from the green node, which is the only node in the open set, until you find more nodes to add to the open set, which are the yellow and this top okay, purple node so, so basically from what green. What you're saying is that the, the uh. Yeah, so I think the algorithm doesn't really describe what you do initially, right? Which is the chain, which is because all this that's the challenge. Assumes yeah, that you have a prior direction, right? Yeah, this is. I actually, I actually went and read the source code for this particular thing, and that's how I actually saw the immediate neighbors. We have to ch it's expand in all directions, um, which makes sense to me. Um, and. What is that? What is that? How is that function actually used? This neighbors function, or how do we use it? We can uh, even look at our, our source code. Yeah, as I say, it's uh, so it's tough because that's CoffeeScript and it's impossible to read. Oh, uh, I do not like CoffeeScript. Um, so from the open list, we get our neighbors, and this this does break down into the um, yeah, like the diagonal and cardinal ones that we did before, which worked great because like once you've got your direction, you know what to do. Um, when you have no direction, you do this, and then you're looping through those neighbors. Each one should be coming with its own direction. Yeah, this yeah, this okay. is where we loop Got over. It. So this is they. It's a set of nodes, each with a fan out, and then you find jump, which should continue to fan using get neighbors. Okay, so if you scroll up, uh, we there's a, we use the return value of get neighbors uh, in the open list loop, right? Yeah, uh, I just. I, I just realized actually, um, I did not check. Yeah, I should, I, in this neighbor one or in the uh, immediate neighbors, I didn't check if these were on the grid, <laughs> which would be nonsense. Um, what is it? Uh, new X plus new Y times W. That was probably not helping this, because uh, in this example, it was—I'm sure it was returning this actual one as a neighbor of this zero up here. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it uh, should not should not do that for the initial set either. Okay. Um, yeah. We did it. We do it correctly for all of these. Yeah, because like you already did that. Yeah, I, I think the one thing we didn't add, and we can worry about this later, is making sure that if we look at a diagonal neighbor, our ability to move the <laughs> diagonal neighbor relies on either the the the, the two adja the, the two adjacent neighbors that we share with the diagonal to be uh, one of those two to be open. Mm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll have the situation like you imagine like a diagonal like string of tiles that represents a wall. Um you could even draw it on the uh on that yep yeah if you made like a diagonal set of walls yeah we don't want to be able to walk through uh that's correct yeah and, and so in order for us to make that move illegal you have to check like mm -hmm. the the adjacent neighbors that you share basically mm -hmm. uh which is maybe something we can add later because that's just like more bookkeeping that we have to do yeah i was gonna say that 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 seems like a a tiny addition to the find it, it uh, is yeah Okay. Uh, so this is this is actually interesting where it didn't it didn't search the whole graph, but it does exhaustively search from the first node. Like you do jump all the way. Yes. Or you yeah. But but once it finds this and these are longer, it's already done. So that's great. Yeah. I was wondering about that. Hmm. But it also finds this jump point. Cool. Yep. Good algorithm. All right. Um so yes, there's that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so we got our, we we grab our open list, which is I'm just gonna close the chat over here. Okay, which is green. I'll I'll um, let you know if, if there's there's chat. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I don't know why, but every time I switch to Safari, it is bringing up 
every window but the one I'm looking at, which is very strange. You know what? I'll tell you what. I have the issue right now where I use spaces. Apparently, nobody else mm -hmm. uses spaces but me. No, it's, uh, it's just you. I'm sorry. I use spaces, and after a, some hours of computing, it's not really clear <laughs> what the triggering factor is. Um, when I switch spaces... Rather than show me the window of the app, the, like the last window of the app that I was using, it arbitrarily selects one of the apps, sorry, one of the windows as being the, the front one. Maybe they have like integer IDs and it just picks the one with the highest integer ID um, or the lowest integer ID. And it always pops that one to the front. So it doesn't matter like which one I, which window of that app. So imagine like I had multiple VS code windows or multiple, multiple browsers browser windows, uh, sorry, multiple terminal windows open, which is what we do all the time, it's, right? And I yep, switch spaces, yep. it always pops up like the same one, even regardless of what I used to have open. And it- That's so annoying. It's terrible. <laughs> well, it's too bad. I was gonna see if there was any any spaces updates in this OS for you, but the answer is no. That's because they're not gonna do anything for Jeff Lee. He's the only user. They know it, I'm infamous there. Nope. Nope, you gotta. They put a game folder in your launch pad, but uh, nothing, nothing else. Yeah. They put a. Are you also the only person who function keys? Are you the only person who uses launch pad too? Oh God, no! I, I think this. launch pad is terrible. I hate this UI so much. Yeah, launch pad is <laughs> ridiculous. Can I turn these into folders? Are they okay? Great, they've made it iOS. That's okay. very silly. Yeah. Wait, if I can make folders, I actually might use this. That's that's mm, silly. Yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. Launch pad. God. Oh, it's got wiggle mode. <laughs> I didn't know that. I wonder right, if they haven't here. figured out what they want the unified iOS Mac OS to look like in the long term. I don't I don't think there is one. Though I don't know. So you think I, they're I just iterating towards a common like... I think I think they're just I think they're just building features for the thing that seems like the right thing. But like it's interesting because like this all this FaceTime shit, they were just like they they're like it's an iOS feature, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, it's on all the other OSs too." So I think the M1 transition and the um, sort of I don't know. There's clearly some Swift UI and iOSification going on in here. Okay, yeah. I think I think there's maybe a shared framework that makes moving stuff between them a lot easier. I see. Because like all that's all that all the stuff is like cross-platform now, the same feature but like with different UIs. So yeah. Like this this is on iOS, but like looks different. I don't know. I'm very excited for this one, by the way. Turn off, turn off only some notifications. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like Slack, yes, messages, no, when I'm working sounds really choice. Anyway. Anyway, they're never going to fix your spaces. I'm so sorry. Wait, one, one more thing. I really miss two-dimensional spaces. Like that was that was what I really used it for. Was it this you one? Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because like all of yeah. the yeah <laughs> right. This is just like old Unix shit. You know, there's all these like old Unix dudes that that worked for 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 Next. You know, and they just like <laughs> I want OpenStep. Like the classic in Unix or in Linux was the two by two, right? The like the, the oh, two yeah. by two desktops. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Mac OS yeah. is so ugly. Man. These, I love that they're like, it works on Mac OS 11, but these screenshots are just ancient. Ancient, ancient, ancient. Yeah, is that is that Mavericks? Probably. That, that, that sounds, looks older that sure than Mavericks, real. doesn't it? Gosh. It really does. That looks like original OS 10. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. I think, uh, I think you're totally correct because... It was that wave. Mm. It's it's awful that part of our brain is dedicated to recognizing OS versions by the wallpaper. <laughs> How like many burn, billions burn, of neurons? <laughs> are I'd like to burn that one away if I could. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, yeah. So from here, yeah. My expectation is that this has to search these eight nodes. Okay. Seven nodes. Eight nodes. Yeah. Seven, because uh, because one of the one of them is a uh, is is occupied. Yeah. Yeah. So it should it should do diagonals. Do we want to just Stop. run the debug 
for this and see what it does? Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't do the right thing, so okay. let's do it. Uh, so let's see, I am debugging current just test, which is the new one I added, and let's do... It dot it only will work, I think. Only. Yep. Gosh, I just I just discovered that the other day. I'm like, damn. Oh, I I got that from one of my coworkers, and it is so good. Uh, and I guess in Ruby, it's ITT. Is the RSpec version of that? I thought it was ITT like you could put X in and front of it. Um, to, that to, to that is that's exclude. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, right. But I didn't know what it was to include it. Uh, yeah, it's ITT and D describe, I think. Uh, oh. Which weirdly is not not consistent at all. <laughs> no, that, that kind of yep. hurts my head. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's get this shit out of here. Um, okay, so in our path nodes, we got one. By the way, I've noticed that I can't I can't view like the contents of maps over here at all, which is super. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just the priority queue. Maybe I was just tripping. Great. Never mind. Um, okay, what cool. is in so check set? Check set is two nodes. That's what we expected, right? It should be zero, one, and one zero, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the direction is correct for that. Yep. 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 So Brilliant. then we are, yeah, we are checking zero, one. So we've gone to this node. Okay. And we're going to find a jump. So based on the direction we're going, I expect it to... Actually, I expect this to check. It should return that it is a force neighbor. Um, so we should get we should get a jump point back. So maybe like this is like to do actually called force neighbor. Uh, the force neighbor is what qual... That's true. Yeah, it's, it's a force jump point. neighbor. It's a little bit complicated because what we do is we like iterate until we find a force neighbor, and wherever we started is the jump point. I think that's the terminology. Or it's not. Um, it's whatever. Shit. So from from here, we see that it has the force neighbor of this. Is that correct? Yes. And so, so yeah, exactly. So so yes. So we add this. So we add this to the set because we see that it has a force neighbor, and then we keep iterating. Yeah, but I will tell you this: like, if we um, let's say you you, you see the row that the the, the black dot is on. Mm -hmm. Can you put another black dot in the same row, but make it like three from the right? Over here, yeah, just way over to the side, and then get rid of, uh, yeah. See, it'll it, it finds that as mm -hmm. as a jump point because it Correct. has a force neighbor, right? Yes. Yeah, and and it, and I see, and actually, this is the more interesting one to me because it finds this as a jump point because there's a force neighbor over here. Correct. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. when I took this away, oops. Interesting. Okay. So basically, so, the, the the thing is, you like iterate, you iterate along your direction, and mm -hmm. diagonal of what your direction is is complicated because you go to the next diagonal and then you search up and up, up and to the right as well, and then you go to the next diagonal mm -hmm. and you, you kind of, you basically keep searching in your direction. If you find a force neighbor anywhere, anywhere, the the point where you started is the jump point, which that's is right. Confusing. So you, okay, so you have to pop back to the top of your find jump iteration. When exactly. you find your force neighbor. Yes. Okay, so so that's actually uh, great. Oh, and actually, that that is sort of what this is doing. Um, but it I think kind it's probably it's is, probably returning too early. Um, the fine jump is so doing. so. What so what is our fine jump function actually doing here? Yeah, this is this is the part where I think I got the most confused. Let's if see. I can if I can back up just for a second though, I think what we yeah. like want it to do is like fine jump. I, I I know that that's like the, the the term that you and I wrote together. Or I wrote it, um, mm -hmm. but I think what it's really trying to say is like find a force neighbor, and if you have one, then the current point in our check set should go into the open list. I think that's what it means, right? Find a force neighbor, and then if it has right. So so looking at this one, I added another one, which which forces this as well. Um, 
so so here's here's a case where we're not true because oh i see yes from, from here this is the neighbor yeah yeah okay this you're, is, this you're is the check right. set neighbor yeah yeah so it's it's the first node no no i think i think the algorithm is correct it's the first node where when you see it has a forced neighbor you're like wait 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 give me the thing that okay. had a forced okay. neighbor yeah so it's so it's so it's named correctly then okay that was my yeah. mistake but i'm glad we clarified it <laughs> Such a such a weird algorithm. So so weird. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to use this in Unity too, aren't we? You are correct. Yeah, I mean probably somebody has an out of the box version, but I, I I think if we understand our own, why not use our own? You know, like this 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 algorithm is like not so complicated that it's not Absolutely. worth having your own thing, right? At at a certain point, oh, like I, you yeah. wouldn't want to write your whole physics your own physics engine unless you had really specific physics. Mm -hmm. But this is the kind of thing where like. Mm -hmm. It's it's worthwhile to understand it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. So from find jump. Uh, so actually, so I'm already I'm already a little unconvinced here. This this continues motion in the direction of the point. So for us, this is positive y. So it's checking. It's going to check zero two. And it's saying if it's the wall, do nothing. If it's outside the grid, do nothing. Um, neither of those is true. So next point I think is wrong. I think actually this is where we should get neighbors and find jump for each of them. I don't think we look at. Because this is, I think, I think, I think I've gone too far. Because from, I want to get neighbors of zero one to look for those. Because the neighbors of zero one will have a forest neighbor, but the neighbors of zero two actually won't. In the and the point we I'm currently, uh, the, the input point is zero one already. Is right? zero one. So I think, I think actually this is this is one step too far. Is what's happened. Okay. Does that does that make sense? It I does. Think, yeah. Cool. So let's let's do this. So point dot x and point dot y. Um, this is this is our we found it. Yep. And I wanna I wanna hold on to that. Um, turn point. This is get neighbors of point. And if there's a force neighbor, we return it. Yes. Otherwise, we keep checking. Um, Right, so maybe we, we, we produce next point on line 130. Yeah, 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 that seems right. Right, because this, this is continuing the direction and spawning diagonals from there. Yeah. Cool, I think, well, that was a, that was a core error, so <laughs> perfect. Um, okay, cool, let us... Debug that again. Hello, computer. OK, uh, so we are on. Gosh, I really wish this did something different over here, but. <laughs> it's not the greatest. No, it's, it is correct about the number of blocks I have, so I can't, I can't be that upset. Um, great, so if we step in to find jump, Next. Oh wait, this this actually should go too. Um, because what we want to do is handle this here. If we're if we're doing the next thing and we're leaving the grid, we return null. But we first we check the current. Uh, check the that's right. Cur check the current node for neighbors or if it's the goal. Yeah. Great. Thanks for debugging this. This is a lot easier with two people. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Alternately, we can do the return null at the top of the function as well using point, but it's a little bit redundant for the first time. I think this is OK. Return null. Oh, you mean if it if it meets any of these conditions? or uh, No, what I meant is like you could theoretically do lines 113 13 to 121 
uh, at the top of the function, and, and instead of using next x and next y, you could use just point dot x and point dot y. Oh, yeah. But well, I think it's OK. It should never be a wall, because get neighbor shouldn't give us that. And it shouldn't be outside the grid, because get neighbor should also not do that to us. But isn't find jump recursive? Uh, yeah, but then when we check the next, when we check the direction we're going, we should, we're not going to recurse if we're stepping into a wall or off the grid because of this. Yes, uh, I, I would agree with that. But if that was the logic, then you should do the I've reached the destination as well down here, right? Like it. Oh, good point. Okay. But sure. I, I actually think it's okay because the destination needs to be. Yeah, but I, I'm I think I, no, no. I actually think this is. I think I actually think you had it the right way. Um, okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down, though. Like, well, I'm also agreeing with you as well because I think the very first time you run this, there's no need to do this check initially because you already check that because of get neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, it's it's kind of belt and suspenders either way. It's it's checking it's checking the current case or the next case. So, I'm yeah. Let's let's see what get neighbor gives us first. Um, so let's see for the point we're on. We came from zero zero. We're going straight down. I expect to see zero two and one two and zero two to have a force neighbor. One two to have a force to be the force neighbor. Okay, sure. Great. So then there is a force neighbor, so we return. Jump point is not null. And then we merge in uh, the point with some of the optionals. Uh -huh, previous. Oh, yeah, we're putting the current, the point we were looking at in there. Yep. Okay. Cool. Path nodes dot set. Oh, is I renamed this? Duh. And this is just the cache. Cool. Oh, I see. And then, uh, yeah, right. Then we recurse backwards to find the path. Cool. OK. All right, so check set should do the second one now. Uh -huh. And they should also be the same jump point. Yeah, but in the other direction. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I think not checking, not skipping the actual node we were supposed to recurse on sure has helped this algorithm. Uh, so check set once again has two in it. Or sorry, uh, let me look. Let me look at current real quick. Oh, uh, sorry. This is the end of the for loop. So now we're popping again. And current is zero one. Great. Okay. So the check sets for zero one. Get neighbors. And then we see that we have zero two, which we're going to continue that direction. And we have our diagonal force neighbor true. So so from this one, we are going to do diagonal search first. What are the two? What are what are the nodes that we've already processed in the token list? We have processed this node and this node. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, got it. All right. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna move this up to the corner too, because the corner is what we're actually kind of starting from. <laughs> just want. I just want to drag you. Okay. Yeah. There, there. There's our actual map. Uh, and let's see. So, you know, one thing one thing I didn't see the algorithm do was take this zero two and continue to go down with it. Does that does that track? It does. Have we gotten there Wait. yet? 
Yeah, we should have done it. We should have done it for either of these jump points because we should have fully recursed. Um, and that's because there could be another point down here. Like once we find this, we should actually search until we see our next force neighbor as well. So I think I think I'm not I'm not completely recursing for the point we're at. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do see it. Um... So I think I mean I think this base case will work because it's so tiny, but also yeah, I want to do I'm gonna do more. Okay, uh, can we That's set great. a breakpoint? Um... Yeah, I guess. Can you scroll up for a second? Yeah. It, it, are, what function are we in? We're in JPS right now? We're in, we're in JPS, yeah. Okay. We're in the... Okay, cool. This is actually uh, where I was hoping to have the breakpoint, actually. Excellent. Can we can we go from the very beginning again? Yeah, totally. Uh, and and real quick, actually, I just want to I just want to look at this one more time. Um, I think mm, this is so interesting. I think maybe this actually returns an array of points. And possibly builds off of that. Because we actually, like, this just, this shouldn't return here. It should say, I have a jump point. And then also, I need to process the rest of my nodes through find jump. Like, I need to take this and walk down here, and then from this direction, walk into a wall and be like, OK, cool, nothing is there, which would be this. Um, that like, doesn't track to me, because I think we should do that when we when we pop the, we, we pop square, like 0, 1 mm -hmm. should go onto the open list. And we when we pop that <laughs> off, that's when it should do the 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 scan for the next jump point. Ah, okay. Right, that dotted line doesn't come from the force neighbor scan from the original the green node. It's it mm. comes from the force neighbor scan of the of the of the the gray node at, at zero one. Does that make sense? It does. I buy I buy that. Yeah. Right. This is the first scan. Okay, I agree. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, I wish there was a way to step in this because it would make mm -hmm. it. That's like the one thing that this is missing is the ability to step through. Yep. Uh, we we could modify it. The timer is or the step. It's got it's got some sort of sleeper wait in here. Um, I forgot where it was, but yeah, we could. Oh, I see oh, what you probably said. Yeah. Or, yeah. We can slow it down or okay. pause it ourselves, um, but I, I I agree with you now. Sorry, I was told totally, I was just mistaken. And then from here, it does that search. This is such a such a huge yeah. Thing so it when it's to, yellow, that means that's the current one that we've popped off. That's of the, the current one. Yeah, exactly. So this should search all that way. Yeah. Um, and and I would actually pause it that. Mm. Let's see, I'm going in this direction. So this actually is what I'm going to search first. And then I will check my diagonals. Mm, OK. By the way, I saw I saw an interesting thing here, which is, oh shit, I got to actually recreate the whole thing over here. Oh my god, great. Um, why isn't this one searched this way? How does it know? Do I need to know what grid nodes have been processed? Um, you only search in the direction ah that you're going, and when you, you have were, a jump, that your you... path was going because the right. the whole point of this algorithm is that you wouldn't have searched diagonally from going the, down the node below you because you would have taken a path that went diagonal first. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you only you only break that rule when you've got the force neighbor and you're doing this. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Into it. 
it's this this algorithm is like not well explained anywhere <laughs> it's like it's i can i can see it and see how simple it is and also it is shockingly unintuitive in a certain way i think again because we they they added this extra thing that like Dykstra mm -hmm. and A-Star don't do that's also iterative and recursive and they like people don't really split they don't really talk about those two phases right yep 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 um I do okay well I one one last hypothesis then I think this does return two jump points which are this one and this one so I think find jump does return an array potentially Right. Um, just, just, just. I think a flaw in the in the interface I put together here. That's all. Because from from this node, well, actually, I guess we get neighbors. Hmm. And then we check, and then we check for jumps here and here. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just one point. Fuck. God, it's confusing. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Jump only returns one, but you do check one. multiple neighbors. We check multiple neighbors, and they can each have a jump. And, Every and neighbor get neighbors is intentionally selective, right? Get neighbors. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Okay. No, I, I remain convinced. I feel, um, so start, but, starting but from this one. But it does one, raise the question: Why didn't like why wh why wouldn't we go diagonally in the other direction, right? If you move your whole, if you move this diagram to the center of the mm -hmm. map, so that we we mm -hmm. actually have other directions that we could have gone. Oh my god, it's so confusing though. No. One, one at a time. Uh, yeah. When we went south to the gray node below the green one, mm -hmm. and then we called get neighbors on that node when we popped it off the open list. Mm -hmm. We get these two. Why did we consider? Why did we consider the southeast node but not the southwest node? That was your original um, question, right? That was my original question. The answer, though, is that get neighbors cardinal is it gets the unforced neighbor, which is this one, and then it does a check. Uh, like we we oh, were, I see. You oh were, yeah, it, it we were, actually we looks. Were, we were the cases to yeah. to look for the walls here. Okay. Yes. And yes. here, and here, and here. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Ex exactly. It, it, it's just a lot. <laughs> um. So, so that's correct. That's and it won't, it won't go this way unless there is a wall here, which it will see and be like, "Hey, that was blocked." Yeah, got it. Got to check. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. It does. It does work. It. It. Yeah. So this, I think, this is also a confusing part of the algorithm is that we use the notion of forced neighbors in two different ways. The first way we use it is mm -hmm. the one that you just explained when we look for neighbors, the immediate neighbors of. Uh, the the node that's being popped off the open list, but then we mm -hmm. also use the notion of forced neighbors when we do the jump point scan, right? Right. Yeah, and in in fine jump as we're as we recurse. Oh boy, now it's busted. Get out of here. This this is really the way we're in for me because from here we're gonna find neighbor, 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 get a forced one. But the point we will return is uh Oh, I guess I guess we're here, we get to here and we return, we search for the next one and return this is the point. Damn it, no, it always works. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Thank you. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not anywhere ahead of you right now. <laughs> uh, That's good. I feel like I feel like I at least have yeah. a good chunk of this internalized. Um, yep. Yeah. But still, looking at it, <laughs> it's fucking confusing. Um, great. So, uh, you wanted a, a debug point here. You want me to start it again? Yeah. I, I think maybe. I think what we should do is just make sure that we're getting the same open list points that the mm -hmm. other one is oh great yeah okay um so yep 
That makes sense. And actually, path nodes is going to be a really good uh, case for that as well. Because right now we have 0, 0. You always just hit play and like step step through it, jump yeah, point by jump exactly. point. OK. Uh, cool. And we have now we have 0, 1. So this node's in there. OK. Uh, we are, our current point is 1, 0, which should also come through. Yep. That's that. And now we're expecting um, two, one, two, and sorry, one, two, and two, one. Yeah, there you go. Um, and what is our check set? Zero, two, one, two. This one is a force neighbor. Okay. So we just checked zero, two going straight down. Nothing doesn't get added. We checked one, two, and it also didn't get added. Hmm. One, two is supposed to get added, though, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this this should have been added. OK, um, great. We can, we'll can we go back to that. Let's just do the next two as well. So two, zero should fall off. Where's my path nodes? And then two one, which we're checking. Actually, we can step through this one because this will be the same case as the other one, basically. Uh, two one. Ah, I see. So this is two one moving diagonally this way. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is we see a wall. So let's see. It's not the destination. What are the neighbors we get? Ooh, too many. Okay. I don't think get neighbors for the other ones are checking the grid boundaries. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see threes. That's not good. Yep. Um, and here's here's something that kind of bugs me is seeing one zero in there. We've already checked that. Yeah, get neighbors doesn't account for the directionality. No, get get neighbors. It should, but it's not. It, it really should. Um, and it's interesting because two is in here, and two. This is the destination two two. Two zero. Two one and one zero. Can we two, two get? Two should be in there, right? Two 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 should be the only one in here, actually, um, because from this point, what is our point? Our point is two x two y one. Um, Two two should be in there, but all, one two should be in there as well, right? Yes. Yes, it should be. It should be doing that jump, and I think I see that. That's that's one. Uh, this should be forced true. Oh yes. Yeah, and and so should two two. I mean, or it's the destination, so it should be in there. But like, it's I, not either forced, or. but yeah. Um, yeah, or it's just our straight down check, but even that should have put it in here. Um, one one zero is messing me up. Yeah, how did it how did it get to that? Why did it go fully backwards and say that's a, a valid? Huh. I, I think it's whatever Git neighbors is doing is just not accounting for that directionality. I, yeah, I guess I guess from here that is the direction we came from. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that seems that seems like a small get neighbors bug then. Um, so let's see. We are going one one, so we're in diagonal. So our unforced neighbors are the direction we're going. Which would be two three, or no? It would be uh, three two, and that actually gets added here, which really sucks. Um, We're just not checking the boundaries yep. of the grid, right? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say or p one is greater than w times w, because that that is the boundary check, right? Uh, yeah, we should almost do the boundary check 
before we pass it into the grid. <laughs> oh yeah, but I, I think it needs to be more complicated than that because uh, that x plus dir x component could be negative, mm -hmm. and if that's the case, that shouldn't be. Less you can still zero. get a value of p one that is within the boundaries of the grid, but it's not actually a valid point. Uh, okay, so we got to do this. I, I've yeah, I feel like I've written this check a couple times. Uh, this one, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little function. Uh, in bounds x y w. Uh, do you want me to reverse this to be uh, to be Jeff style? Uh, sure. I, I think we need a height in there as well. Uh, we're doing square grids right now, but otherwise, I totally agree with you. <laughs> uh, we just don't have height anywhere in this algorithm at the moment. Well, we do have the length of the grid divided by the width, so you do have the height. Because otherwise, you're, there's no way you can know oh. if x and y are in bounds. Oh, great. Okay, sure. I've just been assuming square. Uh, you're totally right. Yeah. Wait, zero is less than Yeah, y. you basically, ha yeah, you have all the arrows pointing um, yeah. backwards. Uh, zero yeah. is less than or equal yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Great. Nice. <laughs> yeah. TypeScript, TypeScript, TypeScript. And you're never called. Is that the problem? I think that's the complaint. Yeah. Fine. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me. Ju I'm just going to use this ever. We're using this. Point dot x. Point dot y. W. Grid dot length over w. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, and here is another one. Or not in bounds. Next x, next y, w, grid dot length over w. Yeah, I think the inbound, yeah, there you go. The inbound check needs to happen first, or else you might be doing a, like a negative value inside of the. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. It doesn't Seems like good. that for some reason, the type checker. It doesn't like. The... Oh, you have an extra oh. or. Oh. At the end. Checker is smarter than me. <laughs> it's definitely smarter than as, me. As usual, it's always it's smarter than everyone. Um, and then this is in bounds. This is not in bounds. Not in bounds. New x, new y, w grid dot length over w. Cool. Did I do the Did I do the first in bounds right, or should that um, if not in bounds? I'm about to I'm about to find a replace not in bounds with out of bounds, but uh yeah. Okay. yeah. One thing I, I realize think... is do we always do that inbounds check with the with the wall check as well? Oh, hmm. Not always. Wait, that one's that one we do. That one's pretty close, but two out of three so far. And why don't we do it for the the the, the odd man out? Oh, because the check set. Oh, you know what? I think I think this is checks isn't necessary, right? Yeah, check set was returning. So it, you're right. So let's do this with grid instead. Grid and um, yeah. What is grid? Is it U and eight array? Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in the order that we get it to, which is grid and W. Oh, and uh, return that and not grid uh, x time no y times w plus x. Mm -hmm. uh, are we trying to say that the, the 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 spot is okay to walk on? 
Yeah, valid point. Okay, so should it be... Should we get rid of the nut? Um... Could... Oh, oh, the one means a wall. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. This... Uh, I, I think I think what you mean is grid not equal to one, right? Oh God, I sure do. And then you have an Thanks. extra open open brace uh, in front of a Y. Oh, that's what happens. Uh, and Dude. these should be all be ands, right? Uh. Uh oh yeah, you're right. Uh that. Which means we don't need the parentheses at all, I think. Okay, now it's happy. Okay, so it's a valid point if we're in all in that range. Mm hmm And it's not a wall. It's not a wall. Okay. Cool. All right, so if not a valid point. Nice, yeah, that is a, a great enhancement. Mm -hmm. and then we can kill 104 to 106, I think, or sorry, 184 to 186. Yeah, 100 percent. Cool, and then actually, this is just if valid point. And we don't need. Oh yeah, we boy. do uh, y, uh, x plus dir x, y plus dir yeah. y. Yeah. Okay, w. Okay, great. I mean, it's. I feel good about that at least. Uh, okay, well, it's just doing this a dozen times then. I'm gonna copy this. So we actually thought this was not correct though, right? Because this is, this get neighbors here is looking for every single neighbor. Well, so, so these, these three aren't right because they're out of the grid, so that much we cover. We we will have covered it once we put this valid point everywhere. Yeah, but the right now it's also from here going back to one zero and two zero, which is confusing me. I feel like it shouldn't actually be walking backwards. Yeah. So so I think our diagonal check is wrong. But let let me get all the valid points in here because okay. this does need to. Sadly, that just still needs to happen. Okay, so our so wait, let me think, let me think this through. Our unforced neighbors for this point are here, the diagonal to the right of that, which is totally out, <clears throat> and then continuing in direct, which is wrong, and continuing in dir y, which is right. So only this point should come through. I'm which so, is too so confused by this code. <laughs> um, <laughs> you wrote this code now. Uh, this this code in general, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, what is this function actually used for? Get, get, neighbors, di get neighbors diagonal. Uh, oh, okay. So get neighbors diagonal is is part of get neighbors, and yeah. if we're if we're moving diagonally, we're running this algorithm. Okay, got it. But but here I think I think actually this is maybe why we're seeing weird points too because we are looking outside the grid potentially with this one and then looking and then doing like weird shit again so it might be seeing this wall as a forced neighbor when it really shouldn't be <coughs> uh... which would I think put this point on but it's totally incorrect to have looked at this one kind of period. Though if it was in a grid like this, it might look at it. I don't know. Let's I, find I don't out. understand why we're considering points that are behind us at all, though. Oh, because we're subtracting right there, right? 
we are yeah so can we let's, take a look at the uh let's look at their force neighbor yeah, exactly. uh, breakdown mm -hmm. they did it they did a good one yeah so here here is the behind case okay yes like it's it's turning it's turning the corner um yeah oh, okay. which... And this and this actually is interesting because we want to gas yeah, off. I think I actually still want inbounds. I'm just copying all of that. And I think I'm gonna return this. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what I want is in get neighbors diagonal when it's forced. I want to make sure that this is inbounds of x minus dir x y grid w and that it's a wall. Yeah. And then if <clears throat> this is a valid point, x minus dir x, y plus dir y, grid w. And then it's gone. So I think that's correct. This is annoying, but I guess it counts. And then we do the same. Uh, and then we do it on the three y more times. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, mm -hmm. X y minus stir y. Oops. I actually cop. I shouldn't have. Yep. And then valid point of x. Plus dir x y minus dir y. Okay, so those are our two force neighbors. So maybe we could do. Uh, it's really it's what if wild what if we made a function that's called is inbounds wall, and then it would simplify the code on line two forty and then the one hmm. below that as well. Okay. And this would just look a lot like valid point, only it would reverse the. Uh -huh. Yeah. Valid wall. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, and something just needs to call that. Oh, thanks. Why? What's. Driving me crazy. Oh, it's just it's like one character. It's shorter. one character okay. longer. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah. letting me get rid of this. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yep. 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 Um, and then you can get rid of two fifty five as well. Mm -hmm. So, so here's something that is gr grinding grinding my gears here. Okay. Uh, get neighbors diagonal can returns at max five elements. We get seven. Okay. <laughs> so so one uh actually sort of begs the question for me: Did I end up in get immediate neighbors by accident? By accident, I did. I did. Point that previous is undefined. There is no previous uh, point. Okay. So maybe we're not doing the path tracking correctly. Something got lost. So let's. I mean, I think. I think we just made that better. But let's step into this again real quick. Yeah.
Where the hell are we? Okay, I would like to be here. Um, okay, so we are adding, uh, actually, this is a pretty good one. The thing we are adding has previous. That's great. We're adding another one. Yep. And then we never add another one again. OK. And it, and it doesn't work. I, I jumped too fast. OK, so I feel good about the first two. Oops, I'll take this one out. Uh -huh. OK, so from 1, 0, let's, let's step into this. Not the destination. And our neighbors are the fuck? Why is my point zero two? Oh, it's the first it's the first neighbor of um Zero one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we're here. Uh, and from here we see we see zero one, which is weird. I don't like that. Yeah, what's the direction that we're currently on for zero two? Zero two should be X just an X, yeah. Just an X? So how did we go backwards? Great question. Um, oh, that's weird. We're in the we're actually in the straight down. We're doing y from zero to which really shouldn't happen. Okay, I'm I'm gonna start over and do one. Yep. One few iterations. Something didn't go right. Okay, so our path nodes. Just this, zero, zero, no previous. Cat's meowing. And what's the current point? The current point, we're at zero, zero. That's our, that's what we've popped off the open list. So it's our first node. And our check set is zero, one, and one, zero. Those seem correct. Yep. So let's join this jump point. Let's get our neighbors from zero one. So we have zero two, okay. which we are. And that's a force neighbor. Uh, zero two is not, because it's basically just us hitting a wall over here, because it's it's this diagonal check. OK, we're, so zero we're, two we're on should yeah. not be a jump point then. Zero two, no, this, th that should be the white node right here. Okay. Um, from zero one, though. Well, actually, we're we're determining that zero one is a jump point at all. So, that's that's what's happening. Yeah. Oh, you know what's interesting? Fuck. Okay. So, we we step through this. We see that this has a force neighbor here. Um. And then we say, okay, we're going to return zero one as our node. Yep. But then the thing we return is zero one with positive y as its only direction. So then we go, we we stick that in the list, and then we actually start recursing from there. That is interesting. So I think, How did that happen? Oh, uh, we. I mean, this is this is the this is the point we're on, and the direction we've entered, where we say that like, oh, this is. <clears throat> We said this is our jump point, but I think. How did Dur we, Y become one? Dur Y Dur Y is one for. From from this point, we've searched here and said like no no no, we ran out of we ran out of okay, horizontal, yep. and we got a force neighbor here, which said oh shit, we actually you know this has this has a force neighbor. <clears throat> the thing we're on is jump point. But 
the actual object that is representing the jump point is still a node with a positive y only direction. So I think right here, actually, we need to take, you know, get forced neighbor update direction because this node turned in its search space effectively. Like from when, when we pop this off the set as a jump point, like, like we're about to, we're about to take this, push it onto the open list and say like, okay, cool. That's like, that's one of the ones we're searching next. But when we pop it off, we need to search from, we need to search in the direction that the jump point would be searching, which is diagonal. Does that, does that make sense? It's weird. <laughs> I've already lost where we're, I've already lost okay. where we're, where we are in the, the outer loop. Are, aren't we in, still in the first iteration? We are, yeah. Isn't our current the current thing that we've popped off the open list is zero zero, right? That is correct. Yeah, it's weird. Uh should I be able to get see that in the scope? Um It gave up. We we're just not in the call stack right now. Like we okay. we have to go back up to the Yeah. So so anyway, we're we're about to we're about to jump out of here. So um in this call stack uh, you are totally correct. Our current node that we've that we're looking at the neighbors. Would you mind at if is... we just restart re restarted the entire thing and just hit the breakpoint again? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, so this is zero zero first node. Okay, we're checking its uh, its two neighbors. And this uh, zero one is the one we're checking right now. Yeah, but why is this dir y equal to one? Because because uh, from here that is, is the direction of movement. Like we're at zero zero. Direct is not not one. Yeah, but th that's wrong, right? Like. Oh, uh, sorry. We're, we're then we're checking this one. I'm so sorry. We're just doing the same thing in the wrong direction. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I'm sorry. I flipped it. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. All right, so 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 what was the problem then? So so the problem is uh, when when we get neighbors, we 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 see one neighbor. So the the problem is that our dir y is one, which means were were I not totally backwards, uh, we're moving we're moving in this direction from top to bottom. Yep. We take this gray node that is zero one mm -hmm. and put it and put it into our uh, open set to be iterated upon. Yep. Um, but the the problem is that we put in the open set with a direction of this, when in fact this is a node that can now move diagonally and its primary check should be this direction. Uh, I don't think we do that at this point. Uh, well, I think I think we do because we know the direction of the force neighbor. Yeah, but we'll it's... check again, right? I'll check again. Because that's what get neighbors does. Get neighbors checks for the force neighbors again, right? So like hmm. when we pop zero one off of the the open list, if you go okay. back to the main loop, we're gonna call get hmm. neighbors on it. Okay. Right. We're going to call line 71 on that. OK, OK. And then uh, we'll check the force neighbors again. So that should be fine. I guess mm -hmm. I guess my interpretation. Because otherwise, if otherwise, if we didn't do that, you wouldn't have that little line going downwards, right? Mm -hmm. I guess my interpretation of this algorithm is that like we yeah, maybe it's not quite changing direction. Maybe I'm thinking of it in the wrong way. Okay. No, uh, if if we modify the direction, we would have the line going downwards because you always check diagonal, and when you're diagonal, you check your two horizontals as well, because that's your job. Let, let's find out though. Um, so let's let's see. We are. What are we adding? The point we're adding is zero one. 
um, with a positive y direction. Okay. So we're adding, yeah. we're adding this. And, and my my hypothesis is that this is correct. Is that it's okay? Yeah. Um, cool. And then we're also going to add one zero with a positive x direction. Yep. Okay. So our open list, just to just to peek into this one, are these two nodes. Yep. And that's it. Okay. So that makes our new current node. Oops. I have to actually define it. Mm -hmm. uh, is zero one. So we're here. Yep. And then we're gonna call get neighbors on that. Uh huh. And that should return the south and the southeast nodes. And it does. Okay. Okay, so for south, it's going to run into the wall and it's going to be null. Uh huh. Right. Yep. Yep. That's what I expect. Great. Okay, so for the diagonal, which is the force neighbor. Yep. Let's step into this. And point is that. Uh -huh. So we're going to get neighbors. It is super strange that it would actually put the parent node in here, which is zero one. And it's because we didn't put the. If you go down to next point. Huh. Uh. Sorry, not, not 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 this one. So what is point right now? Can we take a look at the what point is? Yeah, point is one two. Yeah, it has no parent to find on it. That's it has I'm no parent. Thinking. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So, does this line one thirty two? Uh, I mean, actually. Every this is maybe just super easy for us to add, which is parent is is point. Yeah. Point point idea of point, yeah. That is oh previous, sorry. Oh shit. Okay, so every fucking neighbor needs this to not blow up. Alright, you got me there. Well, it does because we have that um, check. Because we have the base case, and which is that why is you, you were why suggesting. I was arguing to not have it in there. Um, yeah, uh, I'm. Or it's not why. It's not like I anticipated this happening. It's no, not no, like no, I was but... like, oh, damn, Dom's gonna <laughs> step on this landmine. I can't wait. It was more that like, it felt <laughs> like a smell. That was all. Yeah. Um, Especially because this actually pushes previous. I see no reason not to include this though. Um, but you're you're right. I did just lay a landmine for myself, didn't I? Um, well, do right. we need previous to know the actual route though? Like, do we need to go back and read this to get the actual route? It's a it's a good question, and I'm kind of I'm kind of inclined just to put it in here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. What? Oh, you like my my copy buffer? Too. It is it is the nerdiest productivity hack I have, yeah. and I'm proud of it. It's very how Unixy of me. Linus would be proud. Here's the thing: uh, uh -huh. is this previous uh -huh. going to add points that are not in the actual path? Fuck. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Is is yeah. is is point actually uh, on the on the path, or is it just like in our incremental scan? You know what no, I mean? you're you're totally right, which is why why this happens at the outside of the loop after you find. Uh, though, though to be fair, here wait, this is okay um, because in in JPS at the very end, we actually just overwrite it anyway. So the only reason then why we're writing it is because it, we are trying to, to my, get over that conditional, right? Yeah, yeah, to fix my busted function that should only be called once. 
Yep. Got me. I think the smell is that that line of code is only ever written. It's only it only ever does something once in the mm-hmm. entire search, right? Hmm. Yep. 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 No, I love it. God. Also, it could just be. It could be this case, right? We could do dir x is zero and dir y is zero. If you're if you're not moving, get your neighbors. Oh, that's that's a good hack. Yeah, like that. That is what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would say though that like it's still a little bit of a smell because like we call get neighbors mm-hmm. in two locations, right? Yeah, that's true. And <laughs> and only one of those locations will will direction ever be zero, correct? True. So, yep. So this is actually uh, current dot dir x. Equal to zero and, or actually, this could be current dot previous is undefined, and then you get immediate neighbors. Right. right. I like it. Yeah, me too. And that returns to what it was. Oh, and I guess uh, I don't see a reason for this. Pre- previous really is if it's if it's in the check set, or sorry, if it's in the open list that we're pointing off, it has a previous because we're writing it here. Yeah. And then and then we only use it for building the path. So yeah, that feels like a uh, cleanup. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to be super pedantic about it. You could make like a path node whose two child members are the point and the previous. That might mm-hmm. be a little bit pedantic, but that that would make it clear that you're you, that like in your scan you care about the points, and in the open list you care about the nodes. Mm-hmm. Right, cool. I'm just stepping through and this again, too. And again, I think it's like what we were saying earlier in this conversation. The, the thing that makes this complicated is that we're using similar but not identical concepts in two different loops, right? We're using it's so a get, hard, yeah. We're using a get neighbors concept that in, in this outer uh, outer loop on line one set, like, uh, yeah, so this is the inner loop, right? The fine jump recursion loop. There we go. Yeah. Uh, it, worked, it worked this time. Okay, cool. <laughs> because it ran the right neighbors function. And this is the exact, I think, the mind jam that we've been dealing with since literally minute zero of like trying to figure out this algorithm is that like there are similar but not quite the same things, both in terms of data structures and functions yep. in these two loops. Um, inc- and also the concept of forced neighbors is used in two different ways. And, yep. Uh, it's It's wild. It's... Uh, oh man. Okay, so this actually pushes the right thing onto the open list, though. This is great. Okay, <laughs> progress. I'm I'm thrilled. Yeah, um, and then current is one two, uh, which is right here. Yeah. Great, 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 great. And then our check set is the destination. <laughs> And the weird force neighbor, which I actually I really like that this case has this sort of cross force neighbor. Yep. Um, yeah, it feels it feels great actually. Uh, okay, cool. But because the destination has the lowest Chebyshev metric, it's gonna uh-huh. it's gonna be prioritized. Exactly. Yep. So I am I have increased confidence in our. At least our jump point piece of the yeah. search. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I mean it's uh I think the jump point is good. So I think the uh, the only other thing we need to worry about then is the A star piece. Um uh-huh. when we push onto the open list, I don't remember how the priority queue works. When we push, do we do we ever do we update the previous node? 
or do we do we update anything that was like like existing in there, or does push just add it onto the open list? Does push just add it onto. Actually, I think in jump point search it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a good question though. Uh, also, fuck. Okay, this is this was really close, yeah. but. Uh, We found the destination and pushed the wrong node, which doesn't actually seem right. This one, that, uh... Okay, so from this jump point, find, oh, uh... We need to check and see if we're at the destination out here, right? Yeah. We're at we're at one two. One two. The point we're finding the jump from we're looking at its neighbor two two. Yeah, well what's line ninety doing? Oh sorry, wait, uh two two comes out of here. We return two two. Okay, giant jump point is two two, great. Uh, what is line ninety doing? Yeah. Oh yeah, line line ninety is assigning the final. I don't know. It it should really break out of here at some point. Um, so I I think the break actually needs to happen before line seventy seven. And oh. this is Dijkstra, right? Dijkstra says if we pull the destination off the open list, we're guaranteed that we found the optimal path at this point. Gotcha. So yep. I think that's the piece that's missing. I and that'll solve right. your problem. At this point, so uh, let's see. We need to not. We need to break, but actually, it, yeah, right. We need. We can break with a label, right? How does that work? <laughs> uh, on uh, after line sixty four. Uh, mm -hmm. Call give this loop a label so it's like open list search something something like that open list iteration, and then do colon. Okay, open list iteration colon. Yeah, uh -huh. and then on line eighty, just do break space open list iteration. What? I've never once used this JavaScript yeah, feature. It's not you don't use it that often. <laughs> But it's, it's the same thing as like it's, it, if this was if this was uh, go or C, you just use go to and you go to the bottom of the loop, which I kind of prefer. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I see the, va the the validity in this. I think. Mm -hmm. Point. Oh, the previous should be set already. Um, not for the check set points. They don't. Oh, this is get neighbors. I'm sorry. This whole thing. Uh, should actually have we don't need the we don't need the label. It should happen uh, uh, after line sixty nine. Ha <laughs> ah. nice. That's it's got to be when we take it off of the open list. Ah, and, and great. Not, yes. Not before. I'm sorry. That's okay. Totally agree. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy that too much. I. I enjoy See, that other people enjoy it. Let me. Put when, that once way. again, I have no reason to use this JavaScript feature. Yeah. I will. It's forgotten already. Yeah. Uh, did my final node? Final it's a node. Con it got converted to const for some reason. I know. Because there was only one of them. But do we need it? Oh, yeah. Um. I mean, only only because down here we need something to start on. Uh, I guess we could. Oh, oh, oh I, I see. I, no, no, no. I totally see what you're saying. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, though to be fair, we could totally do path nodes dot get of point id. Well, path nodes I get of dx dy. Like that's the final node. Oh, because it's in there. Don't actually need to do anything else. Uh, um, right. This point ID function could be uh, 
Oh, and see, I already got it wrong because it's a comma. Yeah. But uh, do we have a case where? Uh, yeah, this this could be null. Yeah, exactly. After... So I think I think your thing was correct because. Well, okay, well, well, path nodes dot get. Path yeah, nodes are are the things that we know. This this will return an empty path if there's no final node oh, okay. in so the in the set. We, so 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 line ninety is the only thing that we've ever we ever the only time we ever write to path nodes. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, and everything in there has a previous, so you can you should be able to build it backwards. Okay, great. Alrighty. One more time. It's gonna happen. Oh wait, shit. Uh, the the get jump function. Oh, uh, we did we did put that in find jump. You find it, you're done. You stick it in there. Yep. It's a jump point. Okay. All right. So our jump point is uh huh. Actually, I'm gonna, no, no, whatever. Uh huh. One, two, two, two. All right, so. Yeah, and that should be the one that gets sorted to the top of the priority queue. Uh huh. What is current? Current is 2.2. Two. Oh my god, that's actually happening. Fuck, it works. Zero, uh, zero, zero, one. One, two, two, two. Zero 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 one one two oh. two two. <laughs> you know what's really really weird to me is that somehow we always manage to do this like on our boundaries. Yeah. There are, and I think we're almost done. The there's like just the A star slash Dijkstra piece, which is that mm -hmm. I think the Chebyshev thing needs to be complicated a little bit more. It needs to like yep. basically track the accumulated path length. Um. We need to check for like that, the that you don't step through diagonal blocks, diagonal mm -hmm. barriers, and then um, I think Chebyshev could probably be realistically replaced with just Euclidean distance straight up. Yep, I think you're right. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, put some notes in here. Um, so distance should account for path length walked plus distance to destination. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Chevy Chev replaced with Euclidean and prevent walking through Diagonals. diagonal, diagonal gaps. Yes. Uh, and then one more thing, which is, um, what happens if we push the same node twice onto the open list? Mm -hmm. I, I think that if you push the same node with a different direction onto the open list, those should be counted as two different nodes. Um, but like right here, exactly. Well, they're, they're, it's like yeah, because the, because the directionality matters when you enter the node. It's mm -hmm. a, you actually have to treat it as two different two different potential paths if you enter a node from like the northwest as opposed to entering the node from the, the southwest. Does yep. that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think that it is technically impossible to arrive at the same node from the same direction twice when you're adding it to the open list. I don't know how to prove it, but my intuition is that it is actually impossible for you to... Let's say you're stepping northwest into a, a block and it gets added to the open list. I think that 
the nature of jump point search is that you can only ever have done that once. Yeah, I think I think the thing that was uh, polluting the algorithm immensely was the get immediate neighbors uh, being called inappropriately. We were seeing we were seeing nodes get re-added in weird ways because of that. Right. Although I'm no longer convinced that what I said is true, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. because what happens in Dijkstra. The only reason why I'm worried about this is that in Dijkstra you can arrive at a node that's already in the open list a second time mm -hmm. and realize that the second way that you got to it is faster than the first way, right? And so what you have it's to do worse. is replace it in the open list with the second version of it, which has a different path, right? As a different parent. That's right. Does yeah. that make sense? And so uh -huh. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, trying to understand what the equivalent of that is in jump point search. Is it well? Is it replace it, or is it like should we be checking the set uh, the set of path nodes, um, and seeing what comes out of that? Uh, I I think what you what you do is you replace it because you should only consider the shortest possible path, and if you are able to come up with a path to a particular node going in the same direction that is shorter than the one that's already in the open list. You don't need to worry about the thing that used to be the open list because that's not going to give you the shortest path. Mm, gotcha. Yep. Right. Because you're never going to go back and like revise that path. It's always just like that path that was in there is like basically an inferior one. Yeah. Yep. 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 And By that the way, but... actual thing, I, I think, is the actual like secret sauce of Dijkstra's algorithm in the first place. Is you, like you, you, like the reason why it's not the same thing as a greedy algorithm is that it's able to self-correct like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah, a greedy algorithm would always just like give me the shortest incrementally, give me the shortest thing incrementally, which might end up meaning that you edit with a non optimal path, but because you can actually go back and revise a previous path, you can say, oh, I can actually get to this this intermediate point in a more efficient way. So revise it in the open list so it'll sort higher in the priority queue than before. Yeah, that makes sense. And that is really, that's clever. By the way, oh my god, <laughs> nice. They all pass, nice in, including including this case, which is this map. Yep. So delightful. Sweet dude, nice work. Yeah. Oh, nice work yourself. Thank you for uh, helping with this one, because damn. All right, how many how many whips deep am I? Let's. Uh, this is this is just a get rebase get rebase hyphen i right uh, oh yeah oops oh, well first I need to add this and do one more whip um f okay f? this is cool f Where's just that? means fix up it it means it discards those commit messages. Oh, delightful. Right. The squash like like kind of accumulates. It, it, yeah, it, like, yeah, exactly. And then we got a reword. Uh, is this 99? It is. Oh my god, we're going to get to 100 on Sunday. How, what, how perfect. It's actually, it's delightful. It worked, everything has worked out. What's your schedule like on Sunday? Are, are you free? In the, do you want to do it in the afternoon? Yeah, you put it out. You put it out at 3 o'clock, and I like that. Because okay. I actually have an early flight the next day, so that gives me time to like pack and take a night call like do you want to do like lunch we, we talked about getting together and doing something do you want to do lunch before that are you busy i'm busy around maybe noon but we could do like a meal and then a stream we could stream from the same location the, the oh yeah i would is... love to do that are you kidding yeah you want to stream from your house let's do yeah, it yeah let's do it all right i also I have this it. nice wide angle uh wide angle 50 dollar webcam so <laughs> hell yeah yeah let's do that all right i'm excited okay get merge jps we should we should definitely social media a stream 100. that's so weird yeah we totally will and it's up i this one is 22 jump point street <laughs> jump point search i love it yep which was actually a great sequel to a great movie so nice and i know it was a johnny depp show but whatever uh 
Yeah, there was a point where we all loved Johnny and wanted to be Johnny Depp. There was I mean, he's fine. I think Channing Tatum is just funnier. <laughs> oh yeah, he's great. Yeah. Uh, have you seen? Um... Well, I love him because he works with Steven Steven Soderbergh so much, and like everything that Soderbergh does is awesome. What is what is Channing Tatum and Steven Soderbergh done? Uh, well, is they it... did Magic Mike. Which is oh great. well, okay, yeah. Uh, Logan, oh, like... oh man, have you seen Logan Lucky? I feel like I've told you I... to watch this already. I think you have. I haven't seen this. This is pretty it, recent. It's a uh, hillbilly Ocean's Eleven. Oh fuck yeah! With Adam, it's, oh man, it's, it's completely your speed. This yeah, it it looks like it. This cast is off the hook. Yes, yes. Some Sebastian Stan. That's not MCU. I'm into it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, watch tonight. What are you gonna do? What else are you? Gonna do? I, uh, I'm gonna work on the other project. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some bootstrap developing. Sorry, sorry, no, sorry about that. No, I want to get it done. I want to get it done. Okay. Well, I want to put it in a, in a good place before like I fuck off out of here and I'm at the beach. Yeah, I'm actually home tomorrow, so I'm gonna, uh, or, or not working tomorrow, so I'm gonna be working on it as well. Nice. Yeah. Sick. In that case, I will see you on Sunday for big lunch, big stream. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I guess it's like recap. I guess we can just walk walk through the. Uh, the project i love it oh it's so exciting yeah. 100 it's weird i wonder if we could is there any multiplayer we can hook up to the same computer and do local co-op uh we did, we did a game for stream 50 too oh that's interesting yeah mm-hmm. we could even break out the capture card is that what you're saying yeah yeah we could we could move something to the to the pc and capture it just a thought okay all right one one of many thoughts um sick dude well have an excellent night yes take care